a gargoyle sculpture made from copper pots. What? Anyway, let's get into it. Come with me. I had this woman um, approach me with her collection of copper pots and pans that she's collected over the years, which she has a nostalgic connection to, but more not for the intrinsic value of the pots in their um, history, but just for old copper. She really likes that. And she just felt she was getting a little sick of her display that she had in her house and thought she would like to reimagine these in, a, in something different. And she's into um, things like gargoyles and stuff like that and approached me and asked if this was a possibility. And I found that very intriguing. And my first thought is, if I'm doing found objects to make something, I want to maintain part of their past um, life and shape to incorporate that in. Otherwise, why wouldn't I just use uh, new material and, and just go for a straight sculpture? So that's a criteria that I made in my head. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want this thing to come out goofy looking, Disney like uh, pieced together to, I don't know, cutesy steampunk. Um, so that is a, the, the struggle for me on designing and building this thing. How can I pull this off that it doesn't look dumb? Let's see what I can do with it. Let's start with the clay maquette. Back to the table. So as is my custom, my first uh, go-to is to get onto Google and Google up some images that I like. And oftentimes when I print them out, they come out super small like this, which annoys me, but I don't have the technical skills to know how to make them bigger. So I just Googled up three images that I liked. And uh, forgive me if you're not really capturing them very well. Um, this one was done by an actual uh, Irish sculptor and I really liked his take on it and good personality on this one. This one I like for the sheer viciousness of the posture and it's, this is the one I'm kind of leaning towards. Um, as my main inspiration. I want this thing to be very sinister um, because that's what I do. And then this one is to me very standard Notre Dame sort of um, your typical gargoyle-esque figure. So that's what I'm using for my inspiration pieces and I haven't used clay to make a maquette for some time. So I've got one chunk of clay that's still soft I had a, another couple chunks that got hard, so I put them into a bucket of water, and now they are scummy soft. So that should be interesting. Let's get into some mud and have some fun. Okay, so I've just, half an hour in now, I've roughed out a gesture drawing, if you will, um, utilizing this one here, which you may not be able to see very well, just enough to get me the kind of that fierceness and that hunched over, I really looking to get that hunched over posture, really fetal position kind of thing. Um, I defaulted to just doing a cat face for now, that's kind of my starting point, and now I need to morph that into something more uh, ape, human, try to um, distort the features a little bit. We've got kind of a human muscular body shape with a cat head and they're two very distinctive. I need to kind of morph them into a believable, plausible um, combination. So uh, the clay is very sticky, not the greatest consistency for working with, but actually worked okay for the, for the gesture drawing because I could just slap it on. It keeps me from getting trapped into trying to do too much detail because I, I really can't do that. It's, so it's quite blurry, but that's uh, actually a really good thing for me just to get the overall aspect. And I like 
the way the shoulders are angled offset. We've got the knees coming off at different angles there. Um, and then the head really coming forward, very bestial uh, and quite fierce. So I think I've got the right energy for it now. Um, whether I can translate that into pots and pans and continue to maintain some of their shape is yet to be seen. Uh, but I'm just going to mess around with this for maybe another hour and maybe refine this and just see where it goes. Work on getting the muscles in a little bit more defined. Um, and then we may be able to move on to the copper. So about another 45 minutes have elapsed and I think I'm gonna call it on this. I don't really need um, anything more detail wise. I could spend a couple hours and play with it and really have some fun getting the detail. All it is is a gesture drawing to, to get me to the next level. So um, I think we'll move on. It's got all its distortions and everything, but I really like this asymmetrical posture. I think it's quite lively and so now it's how do I start incorporating these pieces that I have um, right off the bat I think this piece could become this arm I would say this is a major component here with this oversized delt um, and the way that comes down it's straight it lends itself to this shape here also I know my customer wanted to have this as big as possible I was trying to be sparing on the clay so I brought this down to about 75% of what I think the overall um, piece should be so I think that would actually work I could work with this um, being the first arm so now um, maybe utilizing that I'm just going to start doing some shaping on that and uh, I don't know how it's going to go so here we go so I've got my mandate of trying to utilize existing shapes wherever possible at the same time trying to create something like this shape here so and I'm trying to use up as much of it as possible so I'm scaling up this might be three quarter it might be a little bit less might be 60% of what the, the finished size is so my initial thought was using this one here as the leading arm but I'm kind of rethinking that now I'm not sure if that's gonna be the appropriate scale I want to try to use as much of this as possible and make it as big as I can so I don't want to nail myself down with that I think what I decided I'm going to do is take this plate here and raise it to try to create the back so just heating this up and trying to get maybe this turtle shell nailed down if you will then another thought I've got is the spout on this thing it's got a nice rolled edge I like that and I think that could be good for the lower jaw so from there I could stylize the rest of it so I would cut away this stuff and then using another piece possibly something like this piece here to sculpt the face over top here and add that on so these are my initial thoughts I'm thinking that if I've got this guy coming off here and this then I've got the scale where I'm coming up to not quite double size of, of my maquette there, but that might give me a framework then for which to build the rest of it around. And it's going to evolve and change. Certainly not going to look like this when we're done, but I'm um, using this as our inspiration, trying to keep um, the same sort of peppiness, um, keep it alive, if you will. So I think I'm gonna go to the forge heat this up. I'm hoping this piece, well, it looks like it's soldered on here, that as soon as I get some heat on there, this will pop off. And then I'm just going to kind of raise this up and create my hunchback. That's the game plan. We're going to start with that. Hello, I'm back. So I'm guessing maybe eight hours of work have elapsed since we last shared this special time together. And I've started working on the components and so far I have come up with this. So 
not sure how that's reading on the camera there. And I think I'm starting to find my way. So you can see, for example, here's a vase where you can still kind of see the, yeah, there's a little creamer or vase or something like that. Um, and I'm trying to keep at least some sort of memory of the shape there. This one's a little bit more apparent. I've got these big deltoids here with the, um, usually using actual pots, but then morphing into uh, musculature. Um, and, and I'm just trying to fumble my way through how much detail am I going to do. I want the thing to look fairly disjointed when you're looking at it. It's like, what the heck is that? But when you pull back the, the context of what you're looking at works. I'm not sure if you're at what you're seeing, if it's working. I am losing my objectivity. I've been at this for a little bit too long. Also, just took a plate and have made a face here. Just starting to rough that out. The spout of another um, picture that will become part of the mouth. Basically, you can see where I'm going with this. The next thing then is to see how much more refinement, if any, I'm going to do with this stuff. Or am I going to leave it quite rough? I think I'm going to go with rivets wherever possible. I'm going to do some soldering. There's also going to be some TIG welding, but I don't know that I'm going to weld every seam. And I just have to start filling in the gaps now. I still have my legs to do here, um, finish off the head, um, and then start attaching the pieces together. But not totally clear on how the finished piece is going to look yet, but at least I have a bit of an idea. So, see you soon. Hi there, several months have elapsed since I think we last spoke and I've made progress on my little gargoyle here, but I'm, I'm struggling with this one. It's, uh, it's a weird concept and the, the whole premise that I put together, trying to maintain the past life of the pots and pans and still and have them translate into something is proving to be challenging. Anyway, here's what I have come up with thus far. So I've got my body here and I formed the two legs. We're looking at the back here. This will actually, the spine here comes out and will turn into a tail. So you can see my two legs. He's in a deep squat. One leg coming across here, the other one here. Um, the foot will actually be on like that. If you take a look at our original maquette here. So I'm trying to go with this pose and you can see my, my basic uh, diamond shape here of the slanted knees and that was basically what I was going for there to try to get a very dramatic pose. So I've got that. Now I have my right arm and the left arm and the face which I basically started on a plate and then uh, been working that out trying to get some personality. So let me just uh, do a quick assembly here and show you what it kind of looks like together. Precariously held together, but they get kind of the idea here. This, um, I started shaping this out early on as a, as a little paw there. I think what I need to do is more like a big primate hand, um, like what I've got wrapped around there. So I'm gonna have to do something that splays out there. I might even do something like that. Um, and then, might also, the other hand, I actually used one of these ashtrays, uh, maybe just for continuity, I might turn this ashtray into a hand that's splayed out onto the base. Uh, the base, I was going to use uh, the tea kettle that I had, but I don't think it's a big enough footprint for, for the stance that I want here. So I might just get a rock, uh, go in my rock pile there and select something nice that I can actually fasten this to. It needs a good um, solid base to be on anyway. But I think what I've got is pretty dramatic pose. It's, I'm deviating from this um, quite a bit now. I've got the arms crossed over, but I think I've got something that's got some apish um, dynamic liveliness to it. And the face will be on here. I've got this spout thing here, which will kind of become the open mouth. So it won't be as anatomically correct as this one by any stretch. I'm stylizing to try to incorporate um, the various existing shapes. So that's 
that's where I'm at. A combination of joinery, I'm, I'm using copper rivets to join some of the pieces together. Um, and in other places, I am simply soldering the pieces together, which goes quite quickly, um, but it is not as sturdy. I have to be able to get a good mating for those pieces to get together there. Yeah, in the thick of it now, I think what I'm going to do is work on this hand, get that piece done, and then maybe move to the face. And then I've got to start actually um, attaching the pieces together because I, the final bits and pieces, uh, I really can't shape or fasten on until I've got this thing locked down in its stand. So here we go. All right, so I just quick mocked up a hand, um, the right scale out of plasticine for a right hand. And then that fits pretty well on my little ashtray here with a nun. Smoking and nuns, it's, uh, you gotta love it. So for the last uh, day, both Fish and I have been uh, just going crazy on this thing. Fish has done a whole pile of soldering and basically sealing up all the joints. I forged a tail. Uh, we've got all the components in place, more or less there, and we've got its rock where it sits on. So we've got that. I'm um, just forging out some fangs out of copper. I've got this. Uh, piece of three-quarter round copper which I'm forging out. Here's a fang that will be cut off and then we got the head, put the head on there. So we've got our head kind of just getting pieced together. We're going to be putting some fangs in there, also some bottom fangs. We've got a nice little tongue. Pretty much all the components are here. Um, so we're just going to finish off, get the head in place, get it all soldered tight and then we're actually going to fill the thing with foam. Uh, because it's, it's going to be outside, I want to have it solid so there's no cavity inside. And then after that, we'll do some antiquing and we're going to uh, epoxy it onto the tap cons in the stone bag. I will bore you with all those details. So, very exciting. Things are actually coming together. This has been a long and arduous journey to get to this point. So, come back in one minute and check us out. Finishing at long last. So I'm gonna come in with my Scope Nouveau product. Thank you, Scope Nouveau. Um, brown for bronze, brass, and copper, which we have copper here. We've also got the pewter uh, pieces here. I'm not sure how it's gonna react with that. With the zinc, I'm imagining, uh, the zinc solder, uh, I should say, is probably just gonna darken that up and that'll give us some dark seams. I'm just trying to look to get some more shadow in this. I like the variation in tone that it already has. So I'm, I'm gonna work with that. Well, let's just do it and see what happens, all right? All right, so did some uh, highlighting with the sandpaper. I think that's a pretty cool effect. We're not done yet though. I've got to now attach it to the rock. Yesterday, not rock, not uh, Dwayne Johnson, uh, an actual rock. I put some PL adhesive in there and that is still kind of gooey. And what I'm going to do is just pop the seal on that and put it onto the stone, which already has some tap on these two Tapcon studs here. So I'm hoping that with the semi-congealed 
PL, I'll be able to get it on there, seat it, and then it's going to uh, cure into place. That's the theory anyway. After that, then we need to wrap our claws. So let's, uh, I don't know how this is gonna work. Something like that. So I've got it, so my knuckles, our second joint there is at the edge though. Now I need to come in with a torch. These are pretty delicate. Um, and see if we can just tap these down around. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's gonna need a little bit of finessing to kind of collapse my fingertips there. Um, all right, you guys go away now. Come back in a couple of minutes. We started with quite a pile, and you can see um, our before and after, I guess, of, of what we've got left. I think I used a little bit over half of the pots and pans, and <clears throat> you can see sometimes I would just cut away a shape to create something. I believe this was actually the throat piece here, the other side there, and I would pick a, a recurved shape and just kind of use it that way. Um, same thing here, I think that was actually the tongue. So this was copper with a silver plating on it. Um, but really challenging to work with a pile of stuff. You should really have, I would say, five times more than what you need for the volume of the project in order to make it work to be able to select. When you're doing junk sculpture um, with found objects, you really need a big pile of scrap to really kind of cull from to be able to get it. And I, I was working with very limited amount of material here. Um, but managed to make it work. Pretty cool. I'm pleased with the results. So, um, to recap, we started out with pots and pans and the client brought me those and they have um, somewhat of an intrinsic value but she also very much likes copper in all its tones um, and the shininess and the, the patinas that develop green copper, all that stuff. So she has a very um, nostalgic representation with copper. So we took these pots and pans and um, my, I don't know, mandate I guess, was that I wanted to retain some of their former life. I didn't want to totally disguise the fact of what my source material was, um, but at the same time, I didn't want this thing coming out looking tacky, pieced together like some sort of Disney junk robot sort of thing. So. I think I pulled it off. I started out, I made my maquette there out of clay and uh, based on some photos that I had looked at Googling on the internet, I was looking for dramatic pose. I am a big fan of Frank Frazetta's work. Uh, he's my favorite artist, so I always try to default to very dramatic postures um, to add life to a sculpture. I think um, sculptures can very often become static and, and look very dead wooden. Um, so I always try to get a very exaggerated posture, something that imbues life into it. And I think I pulled it off there. I think I've got a pretty dramatic pose here. It's also fun working with gargoyles or beasties or orcs or you know, monsters. You've got quite a bit of artistic latitude to be able to um, just kind of express yourself. Part of the attraction of this is that it's a distortion of familiar shape. So this allowed it to work with retaining some of the shapes because it does it's not anatomically correct as um, an actual living creature would be it gave me a little bit of wiggle room to, uh, to work with some things very happy with the way it came out here um, I've got it now patinaed and we put a coat of wax on it I believe she is going to be putting this thing outside and I think the best view 
point from it should be from below. It tends to look good, um, well viewed from above. I'll get Eric to do some beauty shots coming up that way and see how it presents itself. So that is the video. You guys asked for this one. I asked if you wanted to see it and you did. So um, give me a thumbs up, like the video. You know, you guys know what you need to do. Also, I would like to get your feedback on this one. I was a little apprehensive coming into this. As I said, I didn't want it to come out tacky or cheesy. I think I got it. I, I really like the effect with this and I'm quite happy with the overall effect that I've achieved. I want to know what you think. I'd like to hear your criticisms as well and something that maybe I could have done better. But let me know. That's it. We'll see you in the next video. Back out. See ya!